Hello and welcome to today's program on the Sheboygan County YMCA. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Y's upcoming 75th anniversary. This is a milestone that's going to be celebrated by many people who have used the Y over the years, have volunteered and, and have been staff members at the Y. They recently set a goal to try to take the Y into the future and, um, and, and plan ahead for future generations. Uh, I'm Mike Vandersteen, your host for today's show, and I'd like to have the other in, uh, members of the Y Campaign Committee introduce themselves. We'll start over here. My name is Steve Larson. I'm the chairman of the 2011 County YMCA Capital Campaign. Hello, I'm Steve Woods. Uh, I've been a member of the YMCA since 1985, and I'm on my second, third year term as the chairman of the Sheboygan County Board of Directors. Hello, I'm Donna Wetland, the president of the YMCA. Henry Young, I am the current development director of the Sheboygan County YMCA, have been for the past 10 years, and have been a YMCA member for the better part of 65 years. Thank you very much. To start out with, um, the Y has been doing a lot of planning for several years to, uh, to get ready for this capital campaign project, and it was officially kicked off in mid-July. And Steve, could you tell us a little bit about how the campaign is structured and, and how it's going so far? Sure. Before we actually kicked off the campaign, we thought what we'd do is go out to the community and find out what our customers actually are looking for in a YMCA. What programs are working, what programs are not, and what needs they have that they would ask the YMCA to uh, participate in from a programming standpoint. We did that, and uh, we've got uh, some very good feedback, and we took that information from the community needs activity with, that started about two and a half years ago, and we took that to a program assessment committee. Each one of these committees were comprised of between 10 and 15 people. The program assessment committee took that input and uh, along with the Y staff uh, put together a plan based on all three facilities as to what type of programming needs that were out there for the community and our customers. After that information was gathered, we passed it along to a facility needs team that took a look at our existing facilities and uh, determined what needed to be done in each of the three facilities, Sheboygan, Sheboygan Falls, and Camp Waikota, to accommodate the needs of the community. We started our silent phase about a year and a half ago, and uh, at the time of the kickoff of the county campaign, we had re raised approximately $5 million. We then uh, opened up our community campaign on July 21st, and since that time, we've raised approximately $700,000 and the way that campaign is structured will be talked in more detail uh, about with uh, Henry Young. Thank you very much for that, Steve. Uh, during the planning stages, Donna, you did some evaluation of the health and wellness of our community. What did that, um, that survey show you? Well, that survey showed us that there's probably 50% of our community that could be termed to be health seekers, people that are interested in starting a healthier lifestyle, people that would be interested in coming to the YMCA should we improve our accessibility to the building, maybe offer uh, locker rooms that would be on the first floor, especially for the women. Also, if we would um, add to our current fitness programs, encouraging people that have diabetes, people that have been uh, diagnosed with cancer or cancer survivors to come, and also our senior citizens, which is currently our largest increasing group in membership. I hear you also analyzed your current programs to determine which uh, provided program had the best value to your, your customers at the Y. What were the top programs that the community identified? The top programs identified are aquatics, youth sports, uh, gymnastics, Camp Waikota, and of course child care. Wow, that's quite a list of important things. Uh, Steve, you've announced the, uh, the building campaign to preserve and enhance the existing facilities. Mm -hmm. What infrastructure and safety needs uh, are you trying to address with this plan? Well, when we get into the preliminary design stage of, of the three different projects, um, we did look and we did assess some infrastructure updates, upgrades, uh, as well as some imminent safety concerns. Um, very shortly, I'm going to go through the building plans, but just so you can get a, uh, have a grasp of the, uh, the level of that, uh, at the three branch facilities, we're, we are scheduled to spend almost $1.2 million in infrastructure changes and upgrades, uh, mechanical, electrical equipment, 
And as far as uh, ADA accessibility and life safety issues, another half million. So all told, we're looking at uh, spending $1.7 million or 22% of the budget on those two items alone. What's interesting is that people will see the accessible ramps and the drop-off lanes and et cetera, but very few people will ever see the $1.2 million in the infrastructure. It's the mechanical workings of the YMCAs. It's a very old building, and I'm sure there's a lot of old power plants that need to be replaced. I was born in 54, though I was built in 54, so uh, old is a relative <laughs> word. <laughs> Thank you for that information. Mm -hmm. And then uh, turning to Henry, uh, Henry, I think over the years uh, I've done a lot of uh, work uh, with Don Lohman years ago in the mid-70s and the, uh, in the mid-80s on different capital campaigns, and I know he uh, had quite a structure and a, and a process to go through to set that up. What are you looking at for the, the, the form of, of this capital campaign? You're absolutely right. Don was an excellent, excellent mentor. Uh, together we worked on the 73-84 campaign. 96 debt retirement campaign. So the structure that I'm following for this campaign is relatively the same as it was back in those earlier years. The difference is that the current campaign will have 22 divisions, each with their own co-division leader. Each one will have their separate decisions as to whether they'll make individual calls, whether they'll do it by group, whether they'll do it by letter, or whether they'll ask for some type of um, grouping where we can take our message out to a specific area. Those divisions are rather interesting. The first one would be actually the professional division, which we had way back in 73 and 84. That could be attorneys, it could be real estate, it could be insurance, uh, certainly could be uh, medical, it could be dentists, and all of those would be under that professional umbrella. The next segment would be, and probably one of the most important ones in past campaigns, would be business, major business, retail, commercial, unions, financials, foundations, all under that umbrella. Then the balance of the campaign Don and I are really working on, which would be the community segment. That could be our wise staff, it could be board members, it could be a host of others in that particular area. It could be special gifts. I will not take a campaign role until I feel I want to participate myself. So I've taken a division, Friends of the Y, along with Barbara Gruber, and we have together 62 calls. What I think we're doing interesting now is that each week, the four of us will communicate with our division leaders. We'll do it on a rotation basis. I started, followed by Donna, followed by Steve Larson and Steve Woods and we write a segment, and then on the right-hand column of this weekly newsletter, what we do is give the statistics as to what we've accomplished in any of the given divisions that we're undertaking. Am I optimistic? Absolutely. Is it a tough challenge? Yes, it is, because to communicate weekly with 22 <coughs> different co-division leaders is a task in itself. Henry, could you tell us a little bit about the giving levels and uh, how the pledges are structured for the people that maybe get approached by some of the team captains in their everyday working life? Certainly. We developed three different pledge cards. The first pledge card would be for individuals or family, and within that pledge card alone, there are five giving letters, levels. You mentioned uh, 75 years of Miami being in Sheboygan County. The first giving level is... $75 a year for each of three years. And then it goes all the way up, and we've had people that have given $75,000 to show their support. Then there's a second level of giving, which would be uh, the commercial level. And uh, that level uh, has only four categories. And then we have, finally, uh, a top level of giving, which will incorporate uh, foundations and uh, special gifts and whatever. Now, uh, if someone out there in our listening audience would like to participate, uh, are there other ways that they can get to back to the Y to uh, learn more or to, to make a pledge, even if they're not being contacted by one of these, uh, these official um, campaign chiefs? We thought ahead for that, and we've prepared a, a presentation board at the end of this show that will incorporate where they can call or send their gift. Don and I both have our offices at the YMCA. It's at 812 Broken Drive. 
We both have, are on email, we both have websites, we both have telephone numbers that we can be reached and we hope that people, uh, we're reaching about 4,000 people for our total campaign, uh, of which is the bulk of our membership of the YMCA spread over Camp Waikota, Sheboygan Falls and Sheboygan of which 2,000 alone are pledge cards that were sent out, letters that were sent out, mailing pieces and a marketing piece that encouraged people to use the pledge card that was included in their packet. That's fantastic. It sounds like you're really, up, really living up to Don We Logan's think we've got a pretty there. good handle on it, yep. and Don would be proud of us. I think so. Steve, your campaign reaches out into the Sheboygan County community, and, and not only the Sheboygan Y is going to be affected by this capital campaign, but uh, Camp Waikota and the Falls YMCA. Could you tell us a little bit about more of those plans and how they're coming along? Sure. I, it's probably going to be easier to show you in a moment, but what we did once we got all this information that Steve alluded to earlier, uh, we actually contracted with three professional firms to take this information and put together some presentation drawings so we could go out in, in a format like this and also other friends of the Wyatt Henry mentioned and present the the projects in themselves so um, I, I'm actually set up to go do that. Sure, that'd so. be great. And uh, please indulge the papers because I'm trying to put together a 30 minute presentation in about 15 so um, Camp Waikota would be the first one we want to talk about today and uh, in in quick order, uh, as you go out, if you pull into Camp Waikota, there's a storage barn here which has seen its better days. We'd raise that and make additional parking spots uh, for the for the lodge. Uh, we would also incorporate a new storage building to replace what we took down here. Currently, our asphalt parking lot is is this area right here, and it's a one way in and one way out, and it's a very congested. Uh, there's buses involved in that. There's people that have rented the lodge for, for use during the weekend on weekends, and it's, it's, a, it's a traffic problem. We're looking at proposing to add this additional asphalt, which would give us a flow-through traffic pattern. We have a bus drop-off area here where if there's rental groups while camp is going on, the buses are off to one side, and it and it's, uh, takes, takes out the, uh, the problem of traffic with, with kids going all around camp. We are looking at a new proposed structure here, which is going to identify the entrance to the Johnsonville Conference Center, which I'll show you in a moment. And we're also proposing an administrative addition that's going to house camp offices and a workroom and et cetera. To see that in a little bigger detail, this would show the floor plan, which shows uh, we're, we're proposing a, a, a timber structure that's going to uh, highlight the entrance to the Johnsonville Conference Center. This, this would illustrate the director's office, uh, conference room, a workroom. Right now, everything that goes on for camp administratively is taken care of in this little spot here. So this would be a much needed addition. This actually becomes part of the mechanic room and additional workroom. Work Currently, our toilet rooms and showers occupy this space right here. We would uh, encroach into a, a storage room on the west and basically update both of our toilet rooms uh, maintaining the showers which enter out on the pool deck, which is a, which is a state code. We have weddings out here. We rent this to uh, businesses, and et cetera, and our, un unfortunately our toilet rooms currently are not to the level that they should be. So that's a, a long overdue but uh, welcomed um, project in, in this whole uh, stuff that's going on at camp. What doesn't show on here, we have a pond at camp, which is very instrumental in the education process in camp. Uh, and that is going, it's, it's basically fi filling in on its own. And so we're, uh, we would reconstruct the pond as well. This is one of the renderings that we have that would show that we've got the new timber structure that identifies the entrance to the uh, Johnsonville Conference Center. This would be the addition, uh, the administrative addition for our camp offices. And the entire rest of the building would be resided uh, so it all looks uh, new and matching. And um, I think this is a very good representation of what it might look like. They did a very good job on that. Moving to Sheboygan Falls. Uh, Sheboygan Falls sits just north of the, uh, the municipal parking lot, which is right next to the municipal building, which houses the uh, police station. Uh, currently, our entrance into that is on the buried in the corner here, and you really can't see this from, from the road. Um, one of the big things at, at uh, Sheboygan Falls is our daycare. We've got one of the few shows in town. 
Currently up in this area of, the, of our property is what's called the Never House. It's a two-story Cream City brick building, residential house that's, that's uh, old. Uh, our, our plans are to raise that and to fill in this corner of the property with, with, new, with a new addition. Currently in the Falls Y, our lifestyle center is right here. We're proposing to take that and move it over here to the northwest corner of the Y. Uh, it, it allows us to expand that area, but also these windows look out at the Sheboygan River. It just gives you a little better uh, viewing when you're working out. Uh, the new addition would be a combination of daycare and a multi-purpose room, but the entire area, the interior space here would be renovated and turned into daycare. We, we start with infant daycare and go all the way up to YDC UT daycare up to 14 years old. As I mentioned, currently the entrance of the Sheboygan Falls Y is hit, tucked around the corner here and our current ADA accessible entrance is all the way back here. We would propose to put a new entrance facing south on the existing building, tie that into a, an accessible handicap ramp which makes this entrance more accessible, stairs. We'd have parking right, right out in front, which would be drop-off parking um, and also handicap parking. Uh, the drop-off parking would be utilized for people bringing their kids into daycare, handicap parking because of the accessible ramp. Um, we would have some additional interior remodeling to take care of things. From an infrastructure standpoint that I talked about earlier, we'd get some new HVAC units. Uh, there's a fire alarm system out here. Um, once again, those things would happen, but nobody would really see them. A, a rendition or a rendering of what we think would happen with that entrance on the south, showing the handicap ramp. Nothing really happens to the parking lot proper, which the city of Sheboygan Falls was actually, I think they were grateful for that. Uh, this does show that addition to the northeast corner, which would house some additional daycare and a multi-purpose room. Um, I, I do also like to tell people that We've been working on this so long that since we first started, the Y emblem has changed. This was the old Y emblem. This is the new Y emblem on the shirt that I'm wearing. So uh, this has been a labor of love for quite some time. When we get to Sheboygan, excuse me. Sheboygan was a, was a process. As you can see on these plans, I think you can see that it says Scheme C. I think we're all the way up to Scheme G. Um, Infrastructure-wise, that, that I mentioned earlier, we are replacing the boilers, we're replacing the hot water heating system, we're replacing the fire alarm system, we're replacing the building control system, we're replacing the emergency generator. All of that stuff has just about a $1 million price tag and it doesn't do anything with this floor plan. One of the um, life safety issues that I discussed, uh, if you've ever been at the YMCA in the afternoon or in the morning, anytime, it, the drop-off lane on Broughton Drive is an accident waiting to happen. What we're looking at doing is carving out a drop-off lane to get these cars that are either picking up or dropping off kids, uh, buses, etc., off of the traffic lane on Broughton Drive. We are proposing a new entrance that would uh, combine not only a canopy covered entrance but also an ADA accessible ramp. Currently our ADA accessible entrance into the Sheboygan YMCA is on the north side on this uh, series of ramps. Uh, it works but it's not the best. Uh, so the, the, the idea of getting these cars off the street, okay. ADA ramp and a, and a covered canopy entrance just makes perfect sense. When we did this survey that, and information that Steve talked about, a lot of our members, our lifestyle center right now is currently in the lower level under the gymnastics center. It's in a basement for lack of a better word. We were proposing to, to take out racquetball courts four and five and encroach into this northeast corner uh, going past what the, uh, well, city approval would let us go this big, but have a two-story high lifestyle center, lower level, uh, which this would show the footprint of the lower level which would house the, the free weights and etc all the heavy equipment this shows the, the footprint of the upper level with a railing here and this would be open looking down onto the lower level um, we'd have aerobic equipment and uh, other things up here it's accessible by the, ele the existing ele elevator that we have which is currently right here uh, this is something that uh, I, I think when, when people see it, it it sells the whole project Sheboygan is also, the Sheboygan one is also heavily into daycare, childcare, et cetera. 
we are scattered all over the building. We have YDC here right now, we've got babysitting in the basement, and we have more daycare here. We looked at it from a space planning concept, and if we added this 2,000 square feet to the southeast corner of the building, we could consolidate all of daycare into one area in the YMCA. It just makes it easier for, for staff, makes it easier for members, and et cetera. Another one of the um, uh, issues with ADA, we don't have a locker room that enters out onto the pool deck right now. We're looking at adding family locker rooms up into this corner of the building. You ramp up to a certain elevation. We have uh, five family or handicap uh, locker rooms that changing rooms that enter out onto the pool deck, which we don't have right now, and that was a big issue when we talked to um, members. Uh, we, do, we would be having increased space with uh, moving YDC and et cetera out, so it would free up spaces for a dance, a, an enlarged dance studio and another multi-purpose room. The last thing that we're looking at doing at the Y is to expand the entrance corridor, improve our interior circulation, have a member lounge, reduce the size of the kitchen so it's more efficient. We do want to keep the kitchen. That's a, something that the members have told us. Um, but all in all, this has taken some time to put together. And what, what I always like to say is the, is the selling point is this is something that is just unbelievable. <laughs> this is what it would look like, we think, from uh, as you're driving up and down Broughton Drive, the two-story lifestyle edition. Um, I think it's fantastic. Uh, it does show our small addition for daycare and a canopy on the front, which I think still needs some work. And uh, in addition to some other interior model, we are looking at replacing some a lot of the windows on the outside, which are vintage 1954, which are single pane, no insulation, et cetera. So uh, in a nutshell, this to me is the, is the biggest selling picture of this whole project. Now, Henry alluded to the fact if there is any interest, and I'm sure this will be up on the camera for a little bit, but... Uh, that, in record time, <laughs> is my walk through our project. <laughs> that's, that's quite a trip you took us through. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There's a lot of things happening there. Uh, the YMCA has been a valued asset of the community for 75 years. Um, I believe you've balanced your budget for the last 43. That's right. And so it's, it's, it's been a, an important part. What do you see the next decade uh, uh, happening at the Y and, and how can the people that are viewing this program participate in that? That's why we're here. Thank you. Uh, yes, first of all, we are proud that we have balanced the budget for 43 years. Uh, I like to think that it's successful management within the YMCA for that amount of years. Uh, it, it goes to show that uh, with, in addition to our programming that the management staff is has been very good. Um, how can the viewing audience help? How can Sheboygan community help? We're in the midst of our capital campaign. Uh, if you have pledged your support, thank you very much from all of us. Uh, we wouldn't be here uh, if it weren't for you. Mm -hmm. If you have been approached and you're considering uh, financial support, now after seeing these boards again, we'd like you to deeply consider um, maybe raising your level of interest or your, your level of support. Uh, hopefully that what you've seen here today on the boards uh, allows you to, to know that we're doing some worthwhile things with the money that we are taking in. If you haven't been approached and you are interested in, in supporting the Y in whatever way you want to, here is the number that you can call, and we would look forward to, to, uh, to your support. Um, as a goal right now, Mike, and for the next couple decades, our goal is to enhance the three facilities we have for the YMCA, not only for our members, but for the Sheboygan County community. Now, through these enhancements and additions and et cetera, um, those are going to take care of us for many years to come. Uh, I don't think I'm going to see another capital campaign of this magnitude in my lifetime. So what we're doing now is going to take us into the future. But we're, it's going to allow us to provide the continuing high level of service and programs that we, we are doing and we have been doing. But what's almost more important is that going forward, because of these enhancements now, we're going to be able to do this without the burden of debt as the next generation comes in. So I think that's very important. That's very Thank good. Thank you. I appreciate your, your, your report on this and all the work that you put into these plans over several years. I know you've been working on this. Several years is a good definition, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, you know, as I personally think about the why, you know, I came to Sheboygan in 1973 and as a single individual, I went down there and, and had a lot of good recreational activities. 
once they got married and began raising a family, it was a great spot for our kids to learn how to swim, play basketball, soccer. Um, they, they went to the Y daycare, they went to the Camp Waikoto once a summer for that experience. It's just been a, a great help in, in raising a, a good community and good families here. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else have any last things that they'd like to, to add to this? I'd like to add a comment that we're a very sound institution. Since 1962, we've had a foundation and the Endowment Trust of the YMCA currently has about $3.5 million that's been supported through contributions from our Horizon Club members, of which there are at least 600 or so. So it's a very financially sound uh, and growing group of individuals that have cared for decades. In some instances, four generations of members have used the YMCA. Donna, we've got a couple of events coming up that you could maybe give a plug to. There's going to be an event for Camp Waikota, and then we have our annual Thanksgiving Day run. Could you give us a few details on those? Sure. The end of October, the 27th and 28th, we have no school days. Uh, Camp Waikota will be open for children, which also includes an overnight. And then our annual Thanksgiving Day run will be held on Thursday, November 24th, 9.30 a.m. Our major sponsor is Aurora. And last year we had 1,475 participants. This year we're looking to break the record and have 1,500. So it's going to be an exciting day. You can find information on our website, sheboygancountyymca.org. That's great. And you also have a silent auction out at Sheboygan Falls that goes on until the end of the month, too? Yes. The items are on display in the lobby. And Individuals from the community can walk in as well as Y members and place their bid. We have some Green Bay Packer tickets and other items that would interest interest you. That's fantastic. Well, I want to thank everyone for the, the time that you spent today telling us more about the, the Y story and the capital campaign. Uh, from my perspective, it really looks like you've put a great plan together, and I hope that the community will respond to your efforts and, uh, and support uh, the time and effort that's been put in. So thank you very much. We thank everyone for watching the program today, and again, you've got some information here uh, that you can uh, follow up on if you need to, and we'll hope that you'll take Steve's advice and either consider a donation to the campaign or increasing a current one. Thank you very much. Have a good day.